counter reformation now we've talked about some of the problems that the catholic church had on the eve of 1600 married clergy indulgent sales simony uncommitted bishops and friction the list goes on and on and just as many people began to decide that the only course of action was to abandon the catholic church and reform religion in newer purer churches some catholics decided that it was simply time to reform the catholic church itself so they had another they had another plan i mean had other plans but and and i said but and so really beginning by 1517 europe had a number of catholics determined to revive the spiritualism of the catholic church to the end to the to, to end the church's secularism and materialism and focus on the more important matter of how the church should save souls but this renewed focus on improving the catholic church had come just a little too late by the 1540s hundreds of thousands of former catholics had already abandoned the one true church and joined new protestant churches and the one true church is in parentheses and quotation marks institutions founded upon protest against the pope and and they also and against catholicism so by the 1540s the catholic church began what has come to be called the counter reformation sometimes called sometimes called the catholic reformation like the like the protestant reformation a can a concerted effort to either convince or coerce heretics to return to the catholic fold and to clean up the catholic church there were many parts to this counter-reformation. The first was the revival of the papacy, Pope. You know, why? For a very long time, popes had been too content to live with the status quo of the functioning and dysfunctioning of the church and had let spiritual matters slide while they built awesome cathedrals and commissioned great works of art. But beginning with Pope Paul III, 1534, to 1549 popes began to reverse this policy and set about trying to make the church and those within the church set about trying to make the church and those within the church more accountable to shore up the moral authority to the catholic church pope paul iii appointed cardinals that he knew would reform the church and in 1534 called for a commission to study the church's condition two years later um, 1537 two years later 1537 he received the report that the church was in fact pretty corrupt and that most of that corruption could be blamed upon the policies of the popes and cardinals themselves so pope so pope paul iii tried to do something about the corrupt condition of the church in 1542 he established the roman inquisition to find doctrinal errors in catholicism he also recognized the, the jesuits and started the council of trent does that sound familiar yeah jesuits yeah they they're the one who uh started cia man go ahead now when it says the council of trent you read that yesterday when we was out there teaching uh -huh. You don't remember hearing the, about the Council of Trent? You read it. You remember when we were reading about the Apocrypha? Mm, yeah, I remember reading about the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha but... Um, you don't remember the not, phrase Council of Trent? No, no, not, no, not the Council of Trent, no. Oh, yeah, it was in there. That's what yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I missed that then. Okay, well, it says, uh, it says he also recognized the Jesuits. Uh, and started the Council of Trent, both of which we talk about in just a minute. Well, I, I don't want to let it slide. Let me go get it. Let me go get the apocrypha. I mean, my Bible that shows you. I got it up here. Uh, 
Well, believe it or not, I've I been up here reading and carrying on, and he keeps popping in and out of my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess that's the reason why I missed that. I, I misremembered that I read about counseling. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all good. Uh, well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get it later. But this is a Paul Port. Paul, it, uh, a Paul. It says Paul Pope the Third. He also re rec- he also recognized the Jesuits and started the Council of Trent. Both of which we will, both of which we'll talk about in just a moment. Pope Paul the Fourth followed in Pope Paul the Third's footsteps, using the Inquisition, Roman Inquisition, to create a list of banned to create a list of banned books that Catholics were not allowed to read. The list included Protestant works. Okay, but we know the Protestants are the ones who took out. No, the Puritans are the ones who took out the, uh, who didn't accept the. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't accept the the apocrypha. I'll say that they didn't accept them, but they said they were, however, useful and good to read. I know you remember that. You, you said the Puritans. Yeah. Okay. I would have to get it. I'm pretty sure it's the Puritans, but I'll go get my Bible. I think it's still in the car. But okay, so another part of the Counter Reformation was the creation of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, also known as the Jesuits. Yeah. Right. A Spanish nobleman, Ignite, Ignatius of Lo- Loyola, 1491, 1556, wounded and unable to continue a military career, began to worry, like Luther, about religion. But unlike Luther, he decided that the way to end his religious worries was to really throw himself into the church. And after many years of planning and traveling and studying, 12 years, Loyola worked out his own spiritual program, which he outlined in a book called The Spiritual Exercises. Basically, Loyola's program called for absolute obedience to the Pope, education, and strict obedience within the order. Jesuit Nova. Let me go ahead and switch the other way. Novitiate. Novitiate, the period or state of being a novice, especially in a religious order. Novitiate. A, a novice, especially in a religious order. Hmm. Novitiate. Uh, Je- Jesuit novitiates, novices, had to train, had to train for two years instead of the usual one to become members of the Jesuits, and once accepted, had to fight on the Pope's behalf. In the end, Jesuits are the ones who really fight the Protest, who really fight the Protestants. You see them in Spain spearheading the Spanish Inquisition, the Jesuits, and they are and they are also the ones who are who go around proselytizing non-Christians, as the f- French oh, yeah. Jesuits do in the New World. So the, so the people in the, so the Jesuits in the New World were French. Right. As the so was there any Spanish Jesuits in America? Well, I'm gonna tell you there is probably you know probably. Any value of uh, you know, evidence, mm-hmm. but you know, there's Jesuit colleges. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Well, well, yeah, that's Jesuit colleges, man. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to talk about are there any Spanish Jesuits, then I can say yes. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as anyway, the f- go ahead. As the f- uh, and they are also ones who go around proselytizing non-Christians as the French Jesuits do in the New World, living and preaching right. among the Native Americans. A, yeah. thir- a third important part of the Counter-Reformation, or the Catholic Reformation, is the Council of Trent, begun in 1545 and not finished until 1563. The Council of Trent originally was intended to bring Protestants back to Catholicism, while at the same time reforming the Church itself. Lutherans and Calvinists were invited to participate, but it soon became clear that Protestants were too far removed from from Catholicism to help reform it. Protestants insisted that scripture 
be the sole basis of discussion, a demand that ran counter to the whole culture of Catholicism, which taught that the church alone, through its, through its representative, such as the Pope, could explain the meaning of the Bible. Make it, make it say whatever he wanted to say. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the white dude was yesterday. That's right. He is a proud put, man. Put, yeah, put himself in a position that he's the only one. Yeah. And opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. Yeah. He that is God sitting in the temple of God. Amen. That's right. Join himself that he is God. Anyway. <laughs> well, the final decrees of the Council of Trent focused on two main themes, reforming the Catholic Church and making compromise with Protestants impossible. The Council of Trent well, just... Go ahead. Now I was going to say, you know that it, it, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, did, what didn't happen? What you what you were just reading right there that that you know they, there were two things that they wanted to do right mm -hmm. reform the Catholic Church and making One, and making compromise with Pro Protestants impossible. It, it didn't happen. Yeah, hell yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It, it didn't happen. As a matter of fact, it got worse. Yeah. <laughs> now now they own charges for uh, uh you know. Damaging the uh, uh, little young girls and, and what's the name, boys. Diocese. You know, throughout the world. <laughs> okay, before I read this, a diocese. Anyway, go ahead. A diocese is a district under the pastoral care of a bishop right. in the That's Christian right. church. That's a diocese. diocese. That's right. It says, well, the final decrees of the, oh, yeah, the Council of Trent. Wait, wait a minute, you said, you, wait a minute, you said under the Christian church.